So, in our last teaching, we've been able to see how the respiratory diverticulum here gave rise to the laryngo tracheal tube and also the long board. This is the laryngo tracheal tube and this is the long board, as you can see. And also, this long board can also be called the bronchial board. So, coming over to the formation of the bronchi and also the lungs, the bronchial board or the long board divides into two to form the primary bronchi, as you can see here. And the primary bronchi continue to enlarge as a result of the proliferation of cells, it continues to enlarge. And this primary bronchi, the right and the left primary bronchi divide. The right primary bronchi, as you can see here, divides into three secondary bronchi. And the left one divides into two secondary bronchi. So that is to say that the primary bronchi divides into the uh, secondary bronchi. And the three, uh, the right primary bronchi that divides into three, and the left one that divides into two, kind of foreshadow the reason why we have three lobes of the lungs in the right lung and two lobes of the lung in the left lung. And this secondary bronchi can also be called the lobar bronchi, and that's why we have three lobes in the right lung and also two lobes in the left lung then as this is happening the secondary bronchi further divides it keeps growing it keeps growing and further divides it keeps expanding it divides into tertiary bronchi so you can see both the right and the left secondary bronchi keep dividing to form the tertiary bronchi and the tertiary bronchi can also be called the segmental bronchi. So this is the tertiary bronchi. So the tertiary bronchi continually divides. And before death, the tertiary bronchi must have divides, divided into about 17 times. So to, they divide to give rise to about 17 generations of the tertiary bronchi. And after death, about six more we are formed or about six divisions happened after birth and also this whole division was initiated by the interaction between the endoderm of the long board and also the surrounding plant leaf mesoderm so that was what initiated these further divisions and also the, the signal for this division was caused by the fibroblast growth factor so that was what initiated the signal for this division then as of now the tertiary bronchi have been formed and we've been able to see that the tertiary bronchi can also be called the segmental bronchi and as this is happening you can see that the lungs is expanding and as it is expanding it is growing into the peritoneal canal this is the canal that the both of them surrounds the four gods. So it is growing into the pericardio uh, peritoneal canal. And the pericardio peritoneal canal, which is the canal where the lungs lie, keep expanding to accommodate the expanding lungs, as you can see here. Then, when as this is happening, then uh, the most of them surrounding the lungs here. The mesoderm surrounding the lungs uh, causes the development or the formation of the visceral pleura. And also the mesoderm surrounding the body cavity causes the formation of the perietal pleura. So the pleura covering the lungs is purely mesoderma in origin. And the cavity that is formed between the perietal pleura and the visceral pleura is known as the uh, pleura cavity. And you know what the pleura does? The pleura helps the lungs to run smoothly. During inspiration and expiration, it helps the lungs to move smoothly 
in the place where it lies so that uh, to reduce uh, surface tension or pressure there in the chest. So as of here now, you can see that what we have here, the, there are further divisions in the tertiary bronchi, as you can see here. So you see the tertiary bronchi continually divides and the lungs expand. So you can see a lot of division happening in the tertiary bronchi. And that is it for what happened in the development or the formation of the primary, secondary, tertiary bronchi. Then, having seen that, let's go over to what happened in the maturation of the lungs. So, having seen what happened in the formation of the primary, secondary, and tertiary bronchi, and having seen that the tertiary bronchi continually divide to form more tertiary bronchi, now, let's look at the maturation of the lungs. The maturation of the lungs is in four stages. We have the pseudoglandular stage, we have the canalicular stage, we have the terminal sac stage, and we have the alveolar stage, or you can say alveolar period, whichever one. So, coming to the pseudoglandular stage, you've been able to see that here, that the tertiary bronchi have been formed into different generation of tertiary bronchi like i told us now these tertiary bronchi are very tiny they are very tiny but then they further divide to form the terminal bronchi so you can see here now the these ones your naked eye cannot see them so the tertiary bronchi further divides to form about two to three or two or more terminal bronchi that your naked eye may not even be able to see and they are very tiny and that's why because they are very very tiny they are not covered by any cartilage and that's why they are called the bronchioles so these terminal bronchioles have been formed in the pseudoglandular stage and this happened at the fifth week to the sixteenth week so the fifth to sixteenth week is the stage where the tertiary bronchi divide further divides into two to three terminal bronchioles as you can see here and this terminal bronchial you can see the cells are cuboidal in shape then coming to the canalicular stage the terminal bronchial further divides into about two or more respiratory bronchioles so you can see the terminal bronchioles dividing into two or more respiratory bronchial and this happened at the 16th to 26th week of the fetal life and this respiratory bronchial as you can see here the the cells lining them are also cuboidal in shape as you can see here and at this stage now the uh, respiratory bronchioles is not yet functional at this stage then coming over to the terminal sac stage you can see that this respiratory bronchioles further divides into the alveolar ducts. So each of these respiratory bronchioles, each of it, further divides into the alveolar ducts. So coming over to the terminal sac stage or period, this uh, begins from week 26 down to bed. So this period is where terminal sacs begin to form. You know that the respiratory bronchi further divides into alveolar ducts. Now, this alveolar duct becomes the cells here. You can see these cuboidal cells becomes flattened to form the terminal sacs or the primitive alveoli. And at that stage, the capillaries have been formed and they are surrounding the terminal sac, but then they have no contact with the terminal sac. So you can see here, the capillaries have been formed and you can also see the primitive alveoli you can also see the cells the cuboidal cells kind of becoming squamous to form primitive alveoli then we have the final period which is the alveolar period this period begins from the eight months so it begins from eight months to your childhood that is to say that the maturation of the alveoli from the primitive alveoli begins at eight months and even to your birth 
when the fetus have been given birth, maturation is still happening, still childhood. So those primitive alveoli that we have formed from the alveolar ducts, those primitive alveoli, you can see that the cells become flattened. So those uh, alveoli become mature. And at this stage now, you can see that they now have a close contact with the capillaries. So you can see these flattened cells. These flattened cells are the alveoli. And you can see that they come to lie or have a close contact with the capillaries, the blood capillaries. And it is this contact with the capillaries that initiated the blood air barrier. The blood air barrier. So that is it. Then, this is what happened in the maturation of the lungs. And this maturation continue even to your childhood. Then when the alveoli we are formed, the type of cells here is known as type 1 alveolar cells. So these are the type of cells here. The squamous cells are the type 1 alveolar cells. Then another type of cells we are formed in the alveoli. And these are known as type 2 alveolar cells. And these type 2 alveolar cells are responsible for the production of surfactants. Surfactants are fluid. When the lungs are formed, this fluid that are formed by the type 2 alveolar cells, they fill the lungs. But during birth, this fluid either uh, expelled, they are expelled or they become absorbed. Many of them are expelled and some of them become absorbed. Then, but it is not absorbed in entirety. Some of them come to surround the alveoli. Some of this fluid surround the alveoli. And these surfactants, they are very rich in phospholipid. And as they are surrounding the alveoli, they help to reduce the surface tension or the pressure uh, that is caused by air when during expiration. They help to reduce the pressure caused by air during expiration so that the alveoli will not collapse. And that is it. But in a situation where this fluid has not been formed or is not formed, this will lead to the death of a, a premature child. You know that the maturation of the alveoli and subsequently the formation of the surfactants is not just something that uh, begins and ends in uh, the fetal life. They continue to uh, childhood. So, but in a situation where there is a premature death, you notice that because the alveoli have not been fully matured, the surfactant may not be produced, and this will lead to the death of the uh, premature child because of the collapsing of the alveoli, because of lack of surfactant. So, that is what happened in the maturation of the, of the lungs. Then coming over to the clinical, we've been able to see the esophageal atresia when we uh, looked at the formation of the lung cord and also the tracheal esophageal fistula. And we've been able to see uh, the lack of surfactants. Then there is another noun that is known as the accessory bronchi. Accessory bronchi is just like the bronchial board device to form the primary bronchi, the two primary bronchi. Another accessory bronchi may begin to grow from here. May begin to grow from here. It may embed into the lung tissue and it may not embed. So that is it for the development of the bronchi, bronchioles, and the maturation of the lungs. So we've come to the end of this teaching. I will encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisum Great. Like this video. Share this video to your friends and comment on this video. Thank you very much.